Oh, awesome. What do we have here? There's all sorts of goodies. Oh, mm. oh that's, that's good. good. Oh, yummy. Hey, friends. Welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are going to be making a ton of Valentine's Day candies together today. And I am also doing a bunch of cookies, but that is in the video that came out right before this one. So if you, oh, technically I'm still in the middle of making those cookies, but the cookies and candy video are two separate ones. And I need to grab something out of the oven and I'll be right back. I try to be efficient in the kitchen. So when I'm doing one thing, I try to do another thing at the same time. To me, Valentine's Day is not about just romantic love. It's about sharing the love with everybody, friends, family, coworkers, whoever it is. It's just a little bit of an extra excuse to get in the kitchen, do something sweet for somebody and spread the love. I love it. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna be making some easy coffee truffles. And if you don't like coffee, you could just skip the coffee part on those. We're gonna make homemade marshmallows. This used to be a staple Valentine's Day project for me. I used to make homemade marshmallows every Valentine's Day and it's probably been 10, mm, it's probably been eight, eight years since I've made marshmallows and they're pretty straightforward too. Those are not a difficult thing to make. They do just take a little bit of time. We're going to make a peanut butter heart candy. I'm kind of making this up so we're going to see together whether this works. It's basically going to be like a Buckeye center but we're gonna add some Rice Krispies, so there's gonna be a little bit of a crunch, and I think those are gonna be really good, so we're gonna figure that out and see if that works together. The last candy we're gonna do is a candy that I wanted to make at Christmas, but we never got to it, and that is the Chex candy, where you use white chocolate, Chex, Cheerios, pretzels, and we're gonna use Valentine's Day M&Ms to make those. We're gonna start by making our ganache. Basically, a ganache is chocolate and cream. And in this recipe, there is three tablespoons of butter in my pot. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna add three-fourths heavy cream. This needs to be heavy whipping cream, not just cream. You need that fat content. And this is three-fourths cup. And we're gonna heat that up just to basically a simmer. We're not gonna boil this by any means, but we need it nice and warm and we are gonna add some of our espresso powder. Now, typically you would add two tablespoons, but this is homemade and very, very, very strong. So I'm gonna add one heaping tablespoon, so probably one and a half. While our cream is heating up, I'm gonna take three cups of Rice Krispies. Put them in a bag. The ganache is going to turn into our truffles and I put the chocolate chips in our warmed cream and I let that sit for maybe 30 seconds, a minute, just enough for that warm cream to melt the chocolate and then you whisk it together until smooth. You take your ganache, you put it in a bowl and then the bowl needs to go in the refrigerator until firm enough to roll into balls. Right after I tell you how easy it is to make truffles, I think my chocolate seized. It must be my homemade freeze-dried powder, maybe? I've never had a ganache seize on me before using heavy cream and chocolate. I mean, it's not totally seized, but it's kind of grainy looking. I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera because I don't know. We're still gonna chill this and I'm gonna do it one more time, but I'm gonna do it without the coffee and I'm gonna see if I can get this to not look like this. <laughs> not off to the best start, friends. <laughs> so we have our second ganache going here. I have my cream and my chocolate chips in there. I used a different cream. This is a heavy cream from Kroger versus this was a heavy cream from Walmart, the first one. So we're gonna see if this makes any difference. And this looks way better. Yep. It's hard to tell, but this is what we want. Basically, the other chocolate chips looks like there's kind of, it looks grainy, it doesn't look smooth. It could also be some of the additives because wow, I don't think I've ever read the additives to heavy cream before, and this is shocking. 
The one from Walmart says ultra pasteurized heavy cream, mono and diglycerides, carrageenan, which I think is a thickener, disodium phosphate, polysorbate 80, and sodium citrate. <laughs> wow. I hope I didn't scare you off trying to make truffles because they really are that easy. If I had to guess, I think it is my homemade freeze-dried coffee because that is the only ingredient I've never used before. We have two-thirds cup of butter in our mixer. We're going to add our crushed Rice Krispies. Actually, I'm going to add those in just a second. We need to add two cups of peanut butter first. We're going to cream the butter and peanut butter together and then we are going to add our powdered sugar and our Rice Krispie treats. What I'm going to do with this dough is I need it to chill for quite some time. To get the chocolate to stick to it, you need the dough cold. And we're going to cut, using cookie cutters, this into hearts. So I'm tr going to try to roll it out to an even thickness. Let me get a... If you don't want to go through the effort, <laughs> like I am, of making these into hearts, you can just roll these into balls, put them in the refrigerator, and then cover them with chocolate. But I wanna to try to make them into kind of like the Reese's hearts, but with Rice Krispies. I have this nice and even. I'm trying to decide if I think this is too thick. Do you think that's too thick? Because there's gonna be chocolate covering it, so it's gonna thicken it. I'm going to throw this in the fridge, and once it's chilled for at least two hours, we're going to cut it into hearts. Chocolate on my nose. All right, it's time to make the marshmallows. Marshmallows could not be easier. I hope you're not intimidated by this. Let me just show you how easy it is. The first thing we need, let's see if I can do this one-handed, is a baking dish, and I need to get this greased, and we'll set that aside. Just a little bit of avocado oil and I'm gonna spread this evenly. In our stand mixer, we're gonna take five tablespoons of gelatin. And we're gonna add one cup of cold water to this. This is called blooming the gelatin. We're gonna put this on our stand mixer with the whisk attachment. And we're just going to let this sit while we cook the sugar. In a medium pot, we're going to add three cups of white sugar and two cups of white corn syrup. Can you hear my dogs upstairs? Anytime a fire truck or an ambulance or whatever goes by, they can hear it and they howl like they're little wolves. I think it's the most adorable thing, except for when I'm trying to make a cooking video for you. And look at this really cool thermometer I just got as a gift. 
it has a right here the temperature on it and you can do it in celsius or fahrenheit i don't want to touch it right now because my hands are really dirty so right there can be your candy thermometer and your spatula so there's this little bit of rubber so you're getting an accurate temperature because it's not going to sit on the bottom i haven't used it yet i'm pretty excited about this i'm going to link this down in the description box if you want to check this out for yourself but i'm super excited to use this i need to go wash my hands though before i touch too far up the handle because my hands have corn syrup on them so we need to cook this to 120 degrees did i say 120 degrees fahrenheit no <laughs> we're gonna cook it to 240 degrees fahrenheit 120 degrees is basically sauna temperature so that doesn't make any sense since we're waiting for our marshmallow mixture to come up to temperature we're gonna get going on the valentine's day chex mix candy so we need to melt the white chocolate first we need let's see 24 ounces I'm gonna melt this in the microwave. I'm gonna microwave it for 30 seconds, stir, 30 seconds, stir, until it's almost melted. You wanna see a little bit of chunks in there, and then once there's just a few little chunks, take it out, continue to stir, and it will completely melt just from the residual heat. We need three cups of M&Ms. This is exactly two bags. Four cups of pretzels. Five cups of Chex. I have to stop doing that because I just came to check this and we are at 240 degrees exactly on our thermometer. I went ahead and I stuck in my candy thermometer. I need to pay attention, this is very hot because I thought that this gauge is not correct. I haven't tested it yet, but it's not. And it's definitely about 15 degrees cooler than it should be. Is turn the mixer on low with our gelatin. You're gonna slowly pour in the mixture at a low speed until the gelatin melts, and then turn your mixer on as high as it'll go, and you're gonna whip that for about 10 minutes. You're gonna see where the marshmallow starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl. I'll show you that in a minute. But while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna finish measuring out all that we need for the Chex Mix candy. I'm just gonna give that a stir, and it looks so pretty to me. I love it. And this is where you can see it's starting to pull away from the sides. It has been mixing for about 10 minutes. You wanna work quickly now because this is gonna set up pretty quickly. Just take your whisk attachment off and pour your marshmallow mixture into your prepared dish. You do wanna work quickly. This hardens very, very quick in a matter of minutes. And then I'm tapping it on the counter because you can see the air bubbles coming up. It's not a big deal if you have air bubbles in your marshmallows, but I decided to tap it to try to get rid of those. And now that our marshmallows are done, I'm coming back to our white chocolate and melting that so we can finish up our Chex Mix candy. All you have to do is pour your white chocolate over your Chex Mix and give it a mix, and that is it. It is super easy. This is a great thing to make if you need a sweet treat for a crowd because you can whip this up in a matter of minutes, and everybody loves it. I didn't think I was gonna work on the candies anymore tonight, but I have a ton of cookies coming in and out of the oven, and I don't wanna sit here idle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these truffles rolled out. We have our ganache. This is the second one I made. The first one I made I think is gonna be okay. It's a little bit too cold right now for me to roll out, but this one's perfect temperature. I have my little cookie scoop. I'm gonna link one of these. If you don't have yourself cookie scoops, I put it off years for not getting one, and I should have just spit the bullet and gotten one. Makes things so much easier. All you're gonna do is put a little bit of the ganache in your scoop and scoop it out. I'm scooping it out onto a silicone mat. Truffles are named after the mushroom truffle because they look like a black truffle. 
with truffles, if you're gonna err on the side of one size, I would err on the side of smaller because they are super rich. I got all the truffles rolled out from the second batch we did. The first batch turned out no problem. I don't know what I was worried about. It just needs to come up a little bit more to room temperature so I can scoop them out. I still need to roll these, which I'm gonna do in just a minute. But what I'm gonna do in the meantime is I'm gonna cut out our Reese's peanut butter cup. I got this really cute nesting heart cookie cutters from Amazon. I can link them down below. We're gonna use that size. It's about the size of a little bit bigger than a quarter because it looks like just a really good size. It's probably about two bites. This one is way too small because it's gonna be hard to get chocolate around it. And this one is way too big. Is cut the hearts out. And there's our little heart. Then I'm gonna turn it upside down and we're gonna cut it that way. This is so many cookies. I know. Are there any that I can eat? I don't know. Now I'm gonna take my truffles and I'm just gonna kind of roughly roll them into a ball. This does not have to be perfect because they're supposed to represent nature. They do not have to be a perfect ball. But just trying to get kind of those rough edges off. This is our mocha truffle and the consistency is perfect. I'm not sure why it looked grainy when we first started this, but it is absolutely beautiful. I got all my hearts cut out I re-rolled it and I threw it in the freezer for about 10 minutes and it is a lot easier to cut when this is colder so I'm gonna make a note in the recipe that you want it definitely very very chilled see how much easier that comes out and then I can just slide it out and I'm not having to be super ginger with it as it comes out and they're gonna hold their shape a lot better We're gonna freeze all of them before we dip them in chocolate. We have two things that are completely done except the marshmallows. I'm gonna show you how to cut these and kind of prep them because they're, they're a little bit different than store-bought marshmallows, you know, because they're homemade. This is done. I went ahead and I got the kitchen mostly tidied up. I still have one more round of cookies in the oven. If you can hear my dishwasher, I apologize. We tried to, or me, Josh and I tried to get the kitchen cleaned up a little bit so we could enjoy the evening with a clean kitchen and I can wake up and get ready to work in a clean kitchen, which is always definitely more enjoyable than waking up to a messy kitchen. I digress. <laughs> Tomorrow we are going to finish the truffles. We are going to put two different types of glaze on. That was weird. Something just fell in my cupboard. We're going to put two different types of glaze on them. I think we're going to chocolate cover one and then one. I'll show you what we're going to do with it, how we're going to cover it. And then we are gonna chocolate cover those Reese's hearts. Hopefully those turn out. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how those are gonna turn out. It was quite the endeavor figuring out how to cut them with cookie cutters, but definitely frozen is the way to go. I will see you guys in the morning so we can finish this up. Cheers, friends. Hey friends, good morning, welcome back. We just finished up all the cookies and now we get to finish up all the candies that we started last night. So I'm gonna get some chocolate melted in the microwave. You could use a double boiler, but I don't feel like being that fussy right now. So I'm going to put, that's how much chocolate I'm putting in my bowl. That's probably four cups. And I'm going to pop this in the microwave for 30 seconds. I didn't show it, but I added a couple tablespoons of coconut oil to this chocolate mixture. That is going to make it shiny because I'm not tempering this chocolate. I've never tempered chocolate before. That is a whole nother level of baking skills that I don't have. Maybe it would be something fun we do together at some point. But I'm taking each one of the hearts and I'm dipping them into the chocolate and I'm putting them on the cookie sheet to cool. These hearts were out of the refrigerator for probably 10 or 15 minutes before I started doing this. And the hearts were a little bit soft. So when I was tapping the fork on the side of the bowl to get the excess chocolate off, the hearts were kind of falling off the side of the fork because they were too soft. So what I did is I ended up putting this whole tray in the deep freezer and I pulled out some hearts that were in the freezer and it was a lot lot easier 
to chocolate cover these when they were completely frozen. You can see I can work with them a lot faster. I'm not having to be as careful with them because they're not bending and the shape isn't getting deformed as I'm tapping them and covering them with chocolate. It's time to cover the chocolate truffles while I wait for some more of the peanut butter cups to harden in the freezer. They definitely are a lot easier to work with when they're frozen. I have my black cocoa. This is what you need to make Oreos, and I have some left over. I can link this down in the description box. Is I'm going to go ahead and just throw some of my truffles in the bag. Zip it up. And there is a beautiful truffle. We're gonna set that there. Truffles are so easy. So I'm gonna coat the plain ones, the ones without coffee in it, in this black cocoa. And then the truffles with coffee in it, which are these ones, we're gonna cover those ones in regular cocoa. So this is that black cocoa and this is just regular cocoa. So you can really see the difference in color when they're next to each other. I wanna do them in the different cocos so I know what is what. I think what we're gonna do with the mocha truffles, the first ones we made because those ones turned out really good and they're dark chocolate, we are gonna cover them with this semi-sweet chocolate. And then our plain ones, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna cover those, but it's gonna be a little bit different. Before I decided to cover them in cocoa, which is how I usually make my truffles, I was gonna try chocolate covering them, but that was getting to be too tedious. So tried and true, this is the easiest way, and they taste fantastic. We got the last of the Reese's covered. I'm gonna plop these in the freezer so they can harden up. I wanna get this kitchen cleaned because there's little bits of chocolate everywhere. There's chocolate on my hands, there's chocolate on the counter, there's chocolate on the floor. And I want to get all this cleaned up before we start the marshmallows because I wanna keep those marshmallows pristine white. And I just know if I don't do a good scrub on everything, we're gonna get chocolate in those marshmallows. But before I clean, this is the leftover chocolate. I'm gonna plop this in the microwave again and melt it down, and I'm not gonna waste this chocolate. I'm gonna pour it out onto probably a piece of parchment paper or a silicone mat, and then I'll crumble it up into pieces, and next time I need melt chocolate, I'll just use this, because it already has the coconut oil in it. Now that we got the kitchen cleaned up, we're gonna get these marshmallows cut. I've got a ton of powdered sugar here. You're gonna need quite a bit of this, a sharp knife, a bowl and a cutting board, pretty simple. Now we can cut these in any shape we want, but I am going to cut them in squares because this marshmallow is pretty thick because I doubled the recipe. So it'll be a little bit difficult to cut them with cookie cutters this thick. And we have enough heart-shaped things. I think squares will be just as festive. And just like that, you have a homemade marshmallow. That wasn't too hard. You wanna coat every edge of the marshmallow because they'll stick together if you don't. You can use these marshmallows just like you would use store-bought marshmallows. You could make Rice Krispie treats out of them, s'mores out of them, eat them right out of the package, put them in your hot cocoa, however you like to eat your marshmallows. These are a perfect homemade version of them. Now the fun part gets to begin. I'm going to package up these different cookies and candies for my family and friends. 
I bought these boxes at Dollar Tree along with the tissue and I just lined them with different tissue, different colors. I think it's super cute. I'm gonna grab a box and I'm gonna start filling it. I'm gonna be thinking about that person in mind as I fill it. As I was packaging up these goodie boxes, I was trying to think of the individuals they were going to. I marked which family or friend they were going to on the bottom of the box and I tried to remember their likes and dislikes. <laughs> that was a little bit hard for me, but I had a great time. This is gonna be probably a tradition for me from now on. It might not just be a Valentine's Day thing. I might do something like this for Christmas. I didn't just package up stuff for my friends and family, but the platters there, those are going to my husband's work so he can take a little bit of Valentine's Day love to his coworkers, which I just think is super fun. I don't think Valentine's Day has to be just for romantic love. I think it can be for anybody in your life that you want to put a smile on their face. If you want these recipes, they will be linked down in the description box. If you are new to my channel and you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider subscribing. If this is your first time here and you want to watch where we made all those cookies, I will link that video right here so you can go watch that and you can see how we did basically part one to this video. This is me going around town dropping off all the goodies. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate every single one of you. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, <laughs> awesome. What do we have here? There's all sorts of goodies. Oh, Ooh, Oreos. Oh, no, those no? are the marshmallow creams. Oh. Yeah. Marshmallows. Are these nuts? Nuts and chocolate? Which ones? Those oh, are Reese's peanut butter cups. Oh, I want one of those. Oh, this looks There's delicious. truffles. Hazelnuts. Yeah, oh. these are macaroons. These are um, raspberry filled shortbread cookies. Oh, that's oh. not good. What's this? That is, it's called Christmas crack, but. Oh, yes, yes. But I, um, it's basically okay. cereal and white chocolate. But I, I. Can um, I have a little nibble? Yeah, you can eat whatever you want. Mm. Oh, that's, that's good. good. Oh, yummy. Oh, is this the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, coffee one. Those are truffles, yeah. Mm. I better not eat before Thank then. you. <laughs>